guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be looking at how to get started with your airbrush. We're going to cover what the basic parts are, how the thing works, how it's taken apart and put together, and uh, we're going to be working with a gravity-fed airbrush. This particular one is an Iwata Neo. The reason I chose this one for the video is because they're fairly inexpensive. They're a good starter airbrush, so I figure probably a lot of you will have them. And what we're going to do to begin with is just quickly take this thing apart and take a look at what the parts are in it. Uh, this is going to be very important to know for when you go to clean it or if you have to service it or anything like that. So I'm going to start by bringing the camera in closer to my table here where I'm going to be working so that you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so as I'm sure you're all aware, this shiny object here is an airbrush. Let's get started looking at what components are involved here. So to begin with, oh, I'm moving it the wrong way. A lot of airbrushes have a cap on top. This is just to keep you from spilling paint. It's useful if you want to mix paint or tint it in the cup. You can just shake it when you put the paint in there and that allows you to tint stuff on the go. That's something that's very difficult to do with a siphon fed airbrush but uh, fairly easy with a gravity fed. Keep in mind that your cap will have a hole in it. Let me see if I can... Oh. And apparently my camera refuses to pick that up. There's a small hole in the cap, same as with a paint gun. Uh, this is to allow airflow through it. So if the hole in the cap gets clogged, your brush won't spray properly. Make sure you keep that reasonably clean, just like anything else on your brush. In some cases, for example on this airbrush, the cap, or sorry, the cup itself can be unscrewed. There's a small o-ring there. This uh, facilitates cleaning somewhat, but also it allows you to have more than one different size of these. Uh, this particular airbrush, the Neo, comes with two. Sorry if I'm being rather monotone here. Disassembling airbrushes isn't super intriguing. Anyway, um, on the bottom here, some airbrushes come with these, others do not. Occasionally people purchase them separately. I do, for sure. This is a quick disconnect. It's very much like the M couplings that come on your, uh, well, they don't come on your um, hoses, but your air hoses, you most likely have these. I'll just bring over my airbrush hose here. I have the opposite end on my airbrush hose. So what this allows me to do is quickly connect or disconnect my airbrush from air. And this is very, I shouldn't say important. You can obviously get by without it but it's very helpful if you're using more than one airbrush, which you probably will want to when you're using more than one color, which is most of the time. All right, so on the front of the brush, where the paint comes out here, we have the cap. Cap can be, sorry, the cap can be obviously unscrewed there. There are different kinds. Sometimes paint will build up in the cap and you have to clean it. If you have a crown cap, that's not so much of an issue. I personally don't like crown caps because they make it very difficult to back flush your brush if you need to, which is something I'll probably show you in a different video. So there, uh, uh, there we go. Hopefully, oh God, this camera annoys me. You can't see it, can you? For God's sake. Can you see me now? There we go, just had to change the focal point of the camera. Uh, you can see the needle coming out the end of the airbrush there. So when you use the trigger that can retract and come back out, I'm not sure if you can tell I'm doing that right now. That's where the paint comes out and I'll explain to you why that happens shortly. Anyway, if we pull the back off the airbrush just by unscrewing it, sometimes these will have a slot here not on these uh, more inexpensive brushes, but on some of the, uh, the pricier ones. There's a slot there to make it easier to access this in case you want to pull it back for cleaning. Anyway, here's the back of the needle. And the way that the airbrush works is you, you push down on a dual action airbrush. You push down for air, and you want to have that on pretty much all the time, keep your airflow going, and then you pull back to pull the needle back. So the air flows in through the bottom, through the airbrush, passes into the paint, and pulls some of it out and pushes it out the nozzle. 
the further back you pull this airbrush, or needle rather, the larger the opening is and the more paint you get. So for fine lines, you will only pull it back a little bit. For coating larger areas, you'll pull it back all the way. And you'll kind of vary that when you want strokes that are of varying widths. So to pull the needle out, because it's very important to have a clean needle, you'll probably want to polish it. You have this device right here that you loosen, and then the needle slides out the back. Okay, make sure you keep the needle clean, it's very important. And avoid bumping the tip in anything, because if that gets bent, you're going to have trouble, your paint won't, won't spray properly, it won't, uh, won't go on straight, basically, and smooth, and all those good things that you want. So keep your needle clean. This uh, tensioner that I was just playing with, that comes all the way off for cleaning if you want. And then there was the piece that holds the needle. You can see it moving back and forth. That's held in by, uh, what do they call this? The tensioning nut, I believe. So there's a piece here that also unscrews. It's, on, it's got a spring inside it on this particular airbrush. They all have springs at some, at some point in them, but uh, this one, it's directly inside the tensioning nut, which is the case on most Iwatas. And that's what's providing the tension on this piece, which pushes back against you when you go to pull the needle. The further that this is screwed in, the more difficult it will be to pull the needle back. So some people with a very light touch keep that out as far as they can sometimes. Um, they even take this back piece and leave it off the airbrush because it gets in the way of having that back as far as possible. The further that you screw that in, the more tension you get against your needle. If we take this out, since you can tell I'm doing pretty much a full disassembly here, you can see that there's a spring inside it. Make sure you keep those together. And then we're able to pull out the piece that holds the needle. On the end of it there, you can see another piece that pushes against the trigger. I'm going to call it the trigger. The trigger is the piece that you push down and pull back to get the paint. So the needle passes right through here. Once you've got the needle out, it's possible for this piece to fall out. Keep that in mind when you're doing this. You don't want it to break. You don't want to lose it. You know, if you're in a warehouse like I am, it can be very easy to lose little things like this. So anytime you pull that needle out to clean the thing, um, the needle holder piece that I just took out will provide some tension on here, probably keep it in place. But if not, uh, well, even with that, this can fall out. So be aware of that. Now we're getting pretty close to having this thing disassemble as far as we're going to take it. I'm not going to disassemble the air receiving parts here because they almost never require service. I very rarely have to do that. I think I've done that only on one of my brushes once in the last seven years. So uh, this front part also comes off. This is important for cleaning purposes. And this is what holds in the nozzle. Now the nozzle is a small piece of copper typically that uh, is where the needle seats. Okay, It's probably the most important part of the airbrush and it's also very expensive to replace. Be very very careful with the nozzle. A lot of airbrushes will have different shapes of nozzles. Some will come with um, tiny wrenches to unscrew them for cleaning. I would avoid that. If at all possible just clean the nozzle in the airbrush. Okay, you can jam a Q-tip down through the top here to clean it. You can shoot some solvent through there. Um, you can shoot some solvent backward into there and use a Q-tip to get it out. Try to avoid taking the nozzle off because they're very small, easy to lose, easy to warp or bend, and you want to try to avoid that. So that's how you take your airbrush apart for cleaning. To put it back together, simply start screwing all those parts back in. I'll show you what order they go in. It doesn't really matter for the front here. I put the nozzle protecting 
piece back on. This is also kind of uh, the air cap. So without that piece that I just screwed on there, the airbrush won't spray properly because the air won't go through the right spot. I'm just going to put all these components back on the front. So I've got that and the cap itself. All right. Next, I'm going to take the trigger piece, making sure that the hole in it faces the right direction for the needle to pass through it. And when you put this in, you should feel it seat in place so that you can push it down and it springs back up like you would to get air. That's how you know it's in the right spot. Next, the needle holding. Uh, tube or whatever this is called. Sorry, I don't know the technical names of a couple of these parts. But that is what goes in next. And you need to get that right side up. So, if uh, I'm holding it like this, this right here is the top. Sometimes that's a separate piece. So keep that in mind. You might have to put that piece in and then put the, uh, the rest of that assembly in place. Even on some of my water brushes it's designed that way. Next I'm going to slide on my spring, then the tensioner nut, and I'm just going to screw that in far enough so that the spring is effective. Now it's time to slide the needle in. Make sure you're careful about this. Okay, You're sliding it in tip first. So you want to make sure that you don't smash the tip into anything on the way through. And as long as everything's in the right place, that should go in without any problems. Now sometimes you'll find when you go to clean your airbrush, uh, or when you go to use it, that the needle doesn't pull back properly or it doesn't move smoothly. At which point, the best thing to do is just take it out and clean it. There will almost always be just some paint caked on it if that's the case. And that's the simplest way to fix it. Pull it out. Take a little bit of methanol or paint thinner or something on a Q-tip or a cloth and just clean it off. So next I'm putting in the next little tensioner piece there that keeps the needle in place. So when that's loose I can pull the needle in and out without this moving. But once I tighten that, if I pull on the back of the needle, that whole assembly moves with it. Okay. Next I'll put the back on the airbrush. For that I had to move the nut in a little further, the tensioner nut. Let that just go on. It goes on like so. My quick connect screws onto the bottom. Like I said, sometimes you buy those separately, sometimes they come with the airbrush. I believe this one came with it. If you don't have the other end uh, that connects to the hose, just unscrew that and you can screw the hose directly to your airbrush. And finally, the paint cup. All right guys, so that's the basics. When you get your airbrush, make sure it's all clean and everything. You start by connecting it to your airbrush hose, whether it's with the quick connect or just by screwing it in. And then, so obviously you need an airbrush hose. And then in order to actually paint, you push down for air to begin with, and you pull back to get paint. You'll want to practice making straight lines, making dots, making dagger strokes. If you don't know what that is, please YouTube how to airbrush a dagger stroke. There are hundreds of videos about it. I don't really, I might do one. I don't, I don't really see the need for it though. Lots of people have done them. It's a very basic concept but probably the most important concept for actually painting with the airbrush. Don't forget when you're done painting to run some solvents, some water, depending on what kind of paint you're using, uh, through your airbrush. Clean it out as much as you can. I like to store mine with the back off and the tensioner nut all the way out to try and preserve that spring as much as possible. And every time I paint with my airbrush, uh, once I've cleaned it, base of the the basic way by passing some solvent through it. I always pull the needle out and clean that as well. And uh, typically, even when I do that, I come back to it and I find the needle sticks a little bit. I have to pull it out, clean it again before I go to airbrush again. So there is some maintenance required 
with these things, but it's worth it. They give you a lot of functionality and uh, they're really not that difficult. You get much quicker at cleaning them after a few times and they're a heck of a good time to use. So I hope that was helpful to anybody who may have picked up an airbrush over Christmas as a gift or something or anyone who's just looking to get started. Uh, I only said that because right now it's just after Christmas. So if you're watching this video a few months from now, that comment won't make any sense. So that's about it. I hope that helped. I'll probably be doing some more videos shortly about beginner airbrushing and uh, maybe I'll actually clean one after painting with it instead of pretending to clean it like I just did kind of. And now I'm just rambling, so yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.